is your family. This is inspiration. He is desperate with this. A large. This is a big crowd. This is a great army. And it came to pass, going back to verse 1, and it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab, look at Moabites. Ang dami nito. Look at Ammon, that is Ammonites. Ang dami nila. Uh, I will give you the background of this, people. When you see here the children of Moab, who is Moab? If you're going to study the Old Testament survey, do you remember Lot yeah. and Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. Yes. Nung namabas sila doon, may dalawa siyang anak na babae. Kasi yung asawa niya ay nagiging asin. Diba? Yeah. Yung sabi, diba? nagiging batong asin. Look at here, the Moabites in the cave in a certain place to preserve the seed. To preserve the seed. The instrument was the father. I will not elaborate anything there, but you know the fact. Yes. You know the story. The older daughter of Lot, all right, ito yung anak niya. Kay Lot, sino? Si Moab. Yan. The older daughter of Lot. And the Ammon, or Ammon, or the Ammonites, si Ammon dito, ito yung anak. The younger daughter of Lot. Nakuha niyo na? Yeah. Ayan. So they were being the enemy of Israel. Okay, when you say Moabites, they are the descendants of Moab. Moab. And if you say the Ammonites, that they are the descendants of Ammon. Yeah. So there is a word here, na kanina yung binasa ninyo, yung, that is not an ingidi. I would like to give you some vocabulary here in the Bible. That is not an ingidi, that is in. That is not Yes That is not in Gada right? That is in Gedai That's their pronoun here What does it mean? That is a place which is You know within the Rages of Judah That is a fountain That is a fountain Yan ang ibig sabihin ng In Gedai now, in this matter, makikita natin, kami ng mahal, that if you think, if you are the king, there is a desperation with this because of the great battle. Yeah. In verse 2, that there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar. Hindi yung Tamar dyan sa ano ha? Which is in Gedai. You see the place? Now, this is a great multitude. But you never think about the word discouragement. He never discouraged since he heard these things. Why? Because Jehoshaphat knows that there is God in heaven that is going to help them and to guide them. And to fight for their battles. Parang ikaw ito sa buhay mo. Parang ganyan ka. A multitude of burdens Multitude of problems, multitude of situations that sometimes it is not favorable to you. But I want you to know by the grace of God, His message will give you today as what also Jehoshaphat experienced. 
first. So what do we do when we're overwhelmed with the battles of this life and the way forward seems impossible? It is impossible for them, all right, the people of Judah to fight because this is what we call a big, and not only just a big, but it is a multitude of people that is going to destroy them, to fight against them. As they go to the left, they go to the right. They go back, then they go forward. Para na panibutan ka. So wala kang magagawa in this situation. But that's what Jehoshaphat experienced. He never looked to the left. He never looked to the right. He never looked forward. But listen, wala siyang makikita na kung saan ay makakalabas siya. But if there is no way out, there is a way up. There is a way up. And Jehoshaphat, all right, it seems that it is impossible to, forward, to go forward, but look at here. What do we do when we're overwhelmed with the battles of this life and the way forward it seems impossible? Number one, seek the Lord first. Amen. 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 Seek the Lord first. He begins to recognize who is God. He begins to recognize. Recognizing who God is. Kung sino ang Panginoon. In times of your distress, possible of discouragement in life, what you are facing right now, situation what you are facing right now, learn to recognize who God is in your life. Because sometimes this situation allowed by the Lord to happen in order for us to recognize Him. Amen. To walk in His path as what He want for us. And those things na nangyayari sa buhay natin, paminamahal, the Lord orchestrate everything in this situation. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, as you look in the entire chapter, you will see here the power of God. The reason why Jehoshaphat he begins by recognizing who God is. Ngayon, pag meron kang kinakaharap sa iyong buhay, which is not favorable to you, learn to recognize who God is in your life. Sino ang Panginoon sa buhay mo? Ano ang Panginoon sa buhay mo? Don't walk with your own. Why? Matatalo ka. Kung wala ang Panginoon in the midst of these people, in the people of Judah, pag wala ang Panginoon sa kanila, listen to me, sigurado, 100%, matatalo sila sa laban ng ito. Why? Because it is a multitude. This is a multitude of people will fight against them. Look at the Moabites. Akala mo ba kaunti lang ito? Marami ito. Akala mo ba yung Ammonites kaunti ito? Marami ito. Hindi lamang sila, marami pang makikipaglaban sa kanila. But we thank God, there is a great paradigm. He begins by recognizing who God is. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and verse number 3, And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself, to what? To seek the Lord. Yan ang pinakauna. Pag may problema ka, unahin mo ang Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Don't go to your friends. And sometimes we have burden, we go to our friends. Inuuna natin yung iba kaysa Panginoon. Pastor, wala ka kasi sa posisyon ko. No! Unahin mong Panginoon. Because only God can give you a solution to your problems. Amen. Only God can give you peace. Yes. Only God can bless you. Amen. Only God can add more years to you. Amen. Pastor, matanda na ako. Papa, 
paunti na kita ng buhay ko. No. Baka yung nagsasabi, mauna pa yan. Si Pastor Kedy, hindi niya tatagal. O yung nagsabi, nauna na. You cannot underestimate if God orchestrate everything. Amen? Amen? If the Lord will start to orchestrate your life, if everything in your life orchestrated by God, listen, no one can overrun, no one can do something, and no one can stop the hands of God in your life. If God is going to start to bless your life, no one can stop the hands of God. Walang sino mang makaprevent sa kamay ng Panginoon. Pag ang Panginoon ay siyang kumilos. Look at this, a multitude of people. Kung sa ilonggo pa, nagabahak ang tao. It seems that they are like a dust of the earth to fight against Israel. To fight against Jehoshaphat. But Jehoshaphat, he never trust himself. He trust God. He called upon the name of the Lord. And Jehoshaphat, as you look in verse number 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. There is prayer and fasting. Yeah. May prayer and fasting pa ba kayo? Pastor, New Year pa rin. Marami pong pagkain. When you pray, you know, prayer and fasting, it is something that you deny yourself. Abstain from eating and give importance to your prayer. It seems that you deny yourself. That's the point of prayer and fasting. And proclaim and fast throughout all Judah. Hindi lang si Jehoshaphat. Kung di lahat sila. Amen? Amen. So ministry in the Colon Filipino Baptist Church, it is, not the, it is not just the work of the pastor or the work of the leaders, but this is the work of everybody. Amen? Amen. To pray and fast before the Lord. Na ipanalangin ang gawain. He never trust himself. And number two, he acknowledged the power of God. He acknowledged the power of God. You know, the battles of this life, in your life, as a believer of Jesus Christ, you need to seek God first. Unain mo ang Panginoon. Huwag mo unain yung iba. Huwag mo unain yung sarili mo. Unain mo ang Panginoon. Because the Lord observing us, he claimed God's promise. And number two, he acknowledged the power of God. Look at his dependence on God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and in verse number 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said O Lord of our fathers art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to stand with thee if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. 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 Kung ang Panginoon ay nasa buhay mo, at meron kang Panginoon sa buhay mo, who can stand before you? No one can stand before you because you know God is orchestrating your life. The one who controls you is God. It is not other people who orchestrate your life, but it is God who orchestrates your life. So therefore, we must have our dependence on God. We are not independent with God, but we are dependent on God. Amen. Amen. Hindi pwede na ikaw-ikaw lang. 
They are in every decision na meron tayo sa buhay. Kailangan magiging dependent tayo sa Panginoon. Not independent. God is omnipotent. He trusts the omnipotent God. What does it mean? That God is all-powerful God. He is a sovereign God. Look at the sovereignty of God. No one can prevent God. Look at the word as you look in Romans chapter 9. I love Jacob and I hate Esau. You see the word of the Lord? Yeah. Can you question God with that? Oh man, who art thou to question God? No man can question God. Because it is God who orchestrates everything here. As you look in chapter 9 of the book of Romans, if you are going to study about the sovereignty of God, I will put Pharaoh in power and I will also put him down. Ang Panginoon pala ay naglalagay ng kapangyarihan at pagkatapos aalisin din niya. And then you question God. At ang sabi ng Panginoon, kaawaan ko ang kaawaan ko. Then can you question God about His mercy? In chapter 9, when I was a Bible student, I learned to submit in God's sovereignty. The only word that I speak the only word that I uttered before the presence of God, and I said, Lord, thank you. Salamat, Panginoon, sa awa. Kaya pag tayo ay lumapit sa Panginoon, mabi na mahal, wala kang pwedeng i-utter sa Panginoon kung di ang awa at biyaya ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Amen? Amen. Sa buhay natin, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, may your great grace abound. Because even in my prayer here, I did not ask to God in anything. I never asked anything about God. But the only thing I asked, Lord, Lord, may your great grace abound to all your people. Your grace, your mercy to them. Hindi ko ano-ano yung ina-hunter natin. Yung iba pag nag-pray, nag-uuri, ay listen, the only word they honor here is the grace and mercy of God. Amen. Read chapter 9 of the book of Romans. Then there you will realize and understand that the only thing that you need in your life is the grace of God. Yes. Only the grace of God and His mercy. Lord, be merciful unto me. If I'm going to stand here, if I'm going to, to pray here early in the morning, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, kneeling down here and praying to God, nanginginig ka po sa takot dito, akala mo ba? Wala na kayong tao dito. If I kneel down here and pray to the Lord, the only thing I ask God, Lord, be merciful unto me. I praise God because I am the child of God. I praise God because I am born again. And I praise God because, you know, we are saved. Are you saved? Amen? Amen? We thank God for that. We praise the Lord we are saved. But I want you to know, I still beg and ask God for His mercy. Lord, be merciful to call the Filipino Baptist Church. Lord, I pray for your grace. Lord, we need your great grace. Why grace? Because we live by faith. And everything orchestrated by God's grace and mercy. Yeah. You know why you are here? Because of God's mercy. Because of God's grace. The reason why you are here today? Because of His grace. You know why you are here? Because of His grace. Amen. You know why you are changed? Because of the grace of God. Inihingi natin ang biyaya ng Panginoon. You know why you are blessed? Because of the grace of God. You see the blessings of God in your life? 
You know why you still you have your job? Because of the grace of God. Amen. You know why you are protected every day? Because of the grace of God. You solve your problem because of the grace of God. You are blessed financially because of the grace of God. What you have today in life because of the grace of God. Your, the success of your children because of the grace of God. The success of your business because of the grace of God. Everything in this life orchestrated by the grace of God. Amen. Pero wala tayo pwede ipagmalaki sa araw ng Panginoon. Biyay alam ng Panginoon. Nagising tayo kaninang umaga. That's the grace of God. As I wake up in the morning, I just close my eyes and I said, Lord, thank you that you wake me up today. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Every prayer, Lord, be merciful unto me. That's the only word I have to thee. Be merciful unto me. Una sa lahat. Pag nanalangin ako sa Panginoon, I always ask His mercy. Lord, be merciful unto us. Alam mo ba kung bakit? Dahil marami tayong ginagawa sa Panginoon na hindi man nakikita ng pastor mo. May ginagawa tayo na hindi kaaya-aya sa Panginoon. He is an omniscient God. He knows your chat. He knows your sin. He knows what you are doing. He knows everything in your heart. He knows your pet sin. He knows your wickedness. He knows the things or uncleanness that what we are doing. He knows our pride. He knows everything in us. Because He is an omniscient God that knows everything. Whether it be we acknowledge it or not, we sin against Him. But in a different way. Hindi pari pari yung pagkakasala. We understand that we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. But that is not our justification to say because I am a sinner, say with the grace of God, still I'm going to live in sin. No. It violates the will of God. Amen. The reason why every day I ask God, Lord, be merciful unto them. Be merciful to all your people today. May your great grace abound to their hearts. You know why I pray for God's grace to you? You know why I always ask the grace of God? The great grace of God in your heart. Alam ba kung bakit? Dahil mahirap gawin ang ministry pag wala ang biyaya ng Diyos. Amen. Mahirap mag-join sa choir pag wala ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Mahirap magbigay sa offering. Mahirap magbigay ng ikaw po sa Panginoon. Nagkatanong ka pa, ibigay ko ba to? Lord, ibigay ko ba to? Ay, hindi yan tinatanong, ibigay mo na. Oh Lord, please, you know, you, you ask, please pray for me. Like, mahirap gawin, kapatid, ang ministry. So hard to, to, to worship God. Mahirap pumunta sa church, lalo ng taglami. Di ba? Mahirap bumangon at pumunta sa iglesia upang makipag-fellowship at mag-worship sa Panginoon. Mahirap ang ministry. Mahirap ang maghayo. What does it mean? Mahirap gawin pag wala ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Mahirap ikontrol ang lahat. Kalain mo yung pastor, ano? Alam mo, ako yung pastor. Ako yung pastor mo. Marami kong ina-adjust. Marami kang a-adjust yung puro pababahe. Yung mga lalaki, hindi mo na ito ma-adjust. Sige, straightforward kami mga lalaki. Pero pagbabae, mahirap i-adjust. Ang dami nyo kaya. 
Oh, i-adjust mo to, adjust mo yan. Adjust mo lahat lahat. Iba't-ibang iba attitude, iba't-iba yung karakter, iba't-iba yung behavior, iba't-ibang problema. Diba? Pag yun ang ma-adjust mo, listen, yung isa nagsasmile, ang isa gamurukot. <laughs> yung yun, hindi mo ma-explain yung behavior ng bakit isa. Mahirap i-adjust. But I thank God for His grace because everything He put in order. Amen. Look at He acknowledged the power of God. His dependence of God. You know, He believed in the omnipotency of God. He is an omnipotent God. He is an all-powerful God. And look at the number three. And lastly here, do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. As you know the narrative of this chapter, chapter 20, you see their success because it is God who orchestrated wala silang ginawa rito kung di sumamba sa Panginoon. Habang yung mga kalaban ay nag-aaway-aaway na sila-sila lang. It is the Lord who controls everything. Look at the omnipotent God who work. Kahit di ka kumikilos, if God will start to work, it brings you success. Do you believe that? Amen. Sometimes you ask God to help you. Napakalayo mo. Pastor, andito ako. Yung mga anak ko nandito. You want success for your children. Be faithful to God. Trust Him. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. The right way to trust is to trust God. Why, Pastor? Because there is a possibility that you trust yourself. You trust yourself. You trust your money. You trust your achievement. You trust your friends. You trust your employer. You trust everything around you. But I want you to know the right way of trust is to trust God. To trust God. Because it is God who orchestrates everything. The right way to God's blessings is obedience. Yung pagsunod sa Panginoon. And the right way to please God is to worship Him. Amen. Please the King. And the King will give you everything. Please the King. If you please God, listen. No one can stop the hands of God to bless you. Kung ito ang gusto ng Panginoon, yes, I will bless you. Yes, I will give everything to you. Yes, I will give what you ask. I will give you your desire. Look at in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 32. And he walked, who is this? Jehoshaphat. In the way of Asa, his father. And depart not from it, doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. But the first thing here, the right way to please God is to worship Him. That's number one priority of believer. Ang pagsamba sa Panginoon. As long as the church door is open, go to the house of God and worship Him. That is the main and major priority of your life. To worship Him. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and in verse 21, the Bible tells us, when He had consulted with the people, He appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. 
as they went up before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Nakikipaglaban ba? Ang Panginoon ang nakikipaglaban para sa kanila. Di ba mas maganda? Amen. In the battles of your life, na yung nasa front ay hindi ikaw, ang front ay ang Panginoon. Kaya huwag nating pagunahan ang Panginoon, especially sa kanyang kalooban sa buhay natin. Stay put, trust Him, continue to serve Him, because the Lord orchestrates everything. And they, and they said, Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. In verse 22, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said, Look at here. The Lord, Sino ang kumilos? Sila ba? Hindi. Ang Panginoon. The Lord said, What we call ambushments. Yeah. against the children of Ammon, Moab, in the mount of Seir. There are some pronounced in air, Sire. Sire. Yeah. Which were come against Judah, and they were what? Smitten. Sila ba ang kumilos? No, it is God who orchestrate. Therefore, success is not pronounced to you. Success belongs to God. Because if God will start to give you success, who can prevent the hands of God? Amen. Who had more years in your life? It is God. Who gave forth blessing to your life? It is God. If God is going to say, hanggang 2023 ka na lang, Kahit ano pang aspiration mo to 2024, 2025, 2026, 27, 28, 29, 30, your aspiration for, you know, for the future, if God is going to say only for 2023, can you, can you, can you prevent God with that? If God will say only 2023, Hindi ka na pwede sa 2024. Just go home. Not in the Philippines. But there. Can you prevent God? He is a sovereign God. The creator of heaven and earth. He made us. We are His creation. And who are we to question Him? The reason why I always ask God, Lord, your mercy, your grace, Lord. Nanginginig ako. Ikaw pang nagpray ka sa Panginoon, naramdaman mo ba yan? Lord, have mercy on me. If God will say 2023, you cannot stop the hands of God. You know the life of Brother Michael? Ito mo tugtog dito, Brother Michael. That is his second life. I know his story. No, na disgrace siya. It seems that he's going to die. But the Lord has a purpose to him. Amen. And our prayer, Brother Michael, go straight in serving him. If you know that you're saved and you're a believer of Jesus Christ, just go straight serving him. Because God has a purpose for your life. Kalahin mo, you be ka na. Buhay ka pa rin. Because God has a purpose that He's going to yes. use you. God has a purpose to His children, to every one of us. God has a purpose. Hindi ko pwede sabihin na patiwaranan ng yung buhay ko, ganito na lang ako, ganito na lang ganyan. Every day, God has a purpose in your life. And the right way to please Him is for us to worship Him. As long as the church door is open, go to the house of God and worship Him. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments. 
It is the Lord who orchestrates and fight for their battles. Lord, work for me. Lord, bless me. And while you are praying, the Lord also do something and set something and prepare something that you never expect na ganito pala kalaki ang pagpapala ng Panginoon. Masiga ang matamot ako. Wow, what a blessing is of God in my life. Just continue serving Him. Just be faithful to Him. Because on the ladder, no one can reap what you sow. Amen. Only you can reap what you sow. Yes. Ikaw lang ang pwede niyan. So the right way to please God is to worship Him. Look at these people and how they worship the Lord. They are in distress. They are in despair. They are discouraged in their lives. A great multitude to fight against them. But look at God. They seek God first. They acknowledge the power of God. They do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. So therefore, if we believe that God orchestrated everything here, do what is right in the eyes of God. Amen. Do what is right. Gawin mo. May nakatingin sa iyo o wala. Pagbasta mo ito. Gawin mo kung anong tama sa mata ng Panginoon. Wala kang iningi, wala kang itago sa harap ng Panginoon. Lahat ng yan ay nagkikita ng Diyos. Nagkikita ng Panginoon ang problema mo. Nagkikita ng Panginoon ang problema mo. Nagkikita ng Panginoon ang kahinaan mo. Nagkikita ng Panginoon ang kasalanan mo. Lahat ng bagay sa buhay natin ay nagkikita ng Panginoon. So therefore, by the grace of God, do what is right in the eyes of God. God gives us a realization today. That you might realize this thing. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord of serving your life. Look at the hands of God working for the people of Israel. You want these things happen to you in the battles of this life? Therefore, put God in the front and allow Him to work in your life. Without God, there is no success. Without God, there is no blessings. Without God, there is no joy. Without God, there is no happiness in this life. With us, without God, you can do nothing. Jesus said, for without me, you can do nothing. Look at the life of Jehoshaphat. The greatest thing that he had done before the Lord, that he seek the Lord first, he acknowledged the power of God, and he do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. If you are in your problem today, in your burden, in your situation today, I urge you, do what is right in the eyes of God. And the Lord will do the rest. He will give you peace. I don't have love in my heart. God will give you that love. My heart is full of hate. Therefore, God will put love in you. I don't have burden for souls and God will give you that burden. Just come to God and ask God, Lord, in the battles of this life, I will seek you first. I will acknowledge your power and I will do what is right in your eyes. Is that the desire of your life today? Victory. There is only one victory. We'll be victorious. If we we'll do what is right in the eyes of God, then let us pray. Thou art great and terrible God. You are the powerful God. What we are facing in this life, 